I'd like to call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adoption of the agenda. So moved. Karen. Second. Second. Melissa, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Um, we're going to do the minutes separately. The first one is from the regular meeting on March 14th. I have a motion? So moved. Dick? Second. Um, Michelle, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstention. Thank you. Melissa's abstaining. And um, Greg and Cindy will, you don't need, like, yep, not even voting, so there's not even abstention. Um, and then the, midi the minutes from the special meeting on March 28th, same thing, can I have a motion? So moved. Melissa? Second. Dick, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And then just Cindy and Greg, not in the boat. Okay. Well, Thank Cindy's you. with there. Cindy was Cindy there. Was. Oh, I'm sorry, Cindy. I apologize. Josiah, can you abstain since you missed most of that? Please? Oh, sure. Abstain. Thank you. All right. Um, so you can put those aside. Thank you very much. And we will start with the presentations, the out of um, state field trips. Yep, so we're going to do a couple of, we're going to start with a couple of out-of-state field trips, actually out-of-country field trips, and we're going to ask Ms. Erickson first to come up and talk about her trip to Greece. And Ms. Erickson might have a student, or? I do, <laughs> Hello, I see a lot of familiar faces here. I'm Ms. Erickson, though, for the couple of new ones that I do see. I'm a Spanish teacher here at the high school. And actually, in one week, I am taking a group of 21 students to France and Spain. So we are getting really excited about that. Um, but let's talk about next year. So next summer, um, I am looking to take a group of students to Greece. Um, wanted to make it a little bit different and um, add in an opportunity you know, outside of the language class that we have here and that I teach, um, just so that we can open it up for a little um, extra learning. So Jameson, if you wanted to just say a couple words about that. Hi, um, I'm a sophomore at Perryville High School, and I've wanted to go on a trip ever since I heard that my sister was going on a trip. <laughs> I kind of got jealous. And um, I've loved Greece since I was a kid, sixth grade actually, when my history teacher started, first started ta um, telling us about the history there. I love history, and I think it's a really exciting place to go and a lot to learn there, especially with the culture and the history there. I think it's going to be really interesting. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I know that you all have a little bit of information in front of you, um, but I'll just give you a general, general overview. Um, an outline of our itinerary is on page five, so if you wanted to check that all out, um, go ahead and do that. I choose to go with um, EF, which is an outside company that sets up student-led tours. It's the, currently the company that I'm working with now. <coughs> Um, and I do know a lot of other teachers in other towns. I've done a lot of research, um, and they really just seem, and so far have proven to be a really reliable um, company to go along with. They really focus on safety, um, also insurance, so that the kids are protected um, if something happens, you know, before the trip comes along, so that they're they're not going to lose their money, you know. Um, and it's it really just a great opportunity for the kids that I, I really hope you all will consider. Um, in addition, I would like to add that there will be another chaperone there, um, so it's going to be myself and at least one other. Depending on how many kids we get, the more we get, the more chaperones that we can bring. So um, that's about all I have to share. If anyone has any questions about any of that for me. Any questions or comments? Hi. Yes, hi. When will you know how many students you're going to have? Um, so that kind of all depends on, I plan on having a, a meeting, um, so long as this gets approved, in uh, early May. Um, and, and then I can kind of gauge how many kids that I'm going to have. And um, along with my EF representative, we, we make a cutoff. Um, and usually it's before the end of this school year. And that's for a couple of different reasons. First and foremost, it makes the payments much easier for the kids. The closer we get, obviously, the higher the, pay the monthly payments go. 
In addition, we do um, a lot of fundraising, um, and that is to cover additional costs, which are the coach bus that we take as a group together to the airport and back, and then also to cover some additional costs and have a little bit of um, extra money when we are abroad. So, All right, thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Is there a minimum? <coughs> is, there, is there a minimum amount of students that you have to take on yes, this tour? Yes, I'm looking to take 12 students, yes, because I want to bring myself and the other chaperone. And being that the both of us are going to be doing a lot of work, it would you know, behoove us to have at least 12 kids so that we can both go. Yep. Anything Any other questions? Okay. Um, I should make the motion. Oh, yeah, you should make the motion. Somebody mm -hmm. want to make the motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. <laughs> I'll second it. Can you make the specific motion? Can you actually motion? make the motion? <laughs> yes. We have a suggestion. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the out-of-state field trip for students in the class of 2021 at Terrible High School to Greece from June 27th to July 9th. 2019. 2019. 2019. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll second it. All right. Jerry, Dick, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any okay, there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Sure. Well, have a nice trip to France and Spain. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Stay tuned for all the pictures, right? We'll be sure pictures. to share them throughout. Yeah, yeah you're going to come back, so. right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. So now we'll ask uh, Miss Ritchie to come on up, and she's, she's got a trip going out to uh, Italy. I, I hopefully, hopefully do. That's, that's the hope. <laughs> that's the hope. So I am Mrs. Ritchie. I am the art teacher here at Terrible High School. I'm not fluent in Italian. I picked up a few phrases from last year when we went. Um, our trip hopefully um, is for next April vacation. It would be Friday, April 12th to Sunday, April 21st. And that would be 1999. Sorry, 2019. Um, it's called the Grand Tour of Italy, and I gave you, it's in page five, the detailed itinerary, but I gave you a little colored map mm -hmm. with this in bold, and it just shows you exactly where we're <coughs> taking off from either JFK um, or Newark, New Jersey, is that the other, okay. the other airport? <laughs> So that will be decided um, two months prior to going. They finalize all of that to let us know exactly. And we'll be flying from there into um, Milan and to Venice. We have a scheduled, um, on the schedule is a gondola ride and a glass blowing um, tour to see them probably make a, a horse like we saw last year. Um, then we will take a bus all the way down to Florence and hopefully see the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which was something different that we did not get to do last year. And then from there we will travel to Assisi, which we did not do last year as well. Um, and then from there we'll go to Pompeii, which was extraordinary. It was just phenomenal to go to Pompeii and see all the ruins and all the history there, the architecture. It's just unbelievable. Um, Sorrento and then the island of Capri which was what we missed last year when we were stranded at the airport um, and then also Rome which was the other part of our trip that we did not get to see and there we will visit the Sistine Chapel and um, the fountain the Tebby fountain and the Colosseum and then from there we will travel home so hopefully, hopefully you'll approve no our trip. Problems next year. Yes. I, I, yes, the weather <laughs> seems to be the issue. So, any questions or comments from Mr. Richie? Okay. Can I have a motion, please? So me. No, I can you read I'll it? Read. All right. Jerry, go ahead. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> approve an out-of-state field trip from grade 10 to 12 students at Terrible High School to Italy from April 12th, 2019 to April 21st, 2019. All right, Jerry. I'll second it. Dick, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, there you go. All right, thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Enjoy. And we will also Absolutely. give you pictures. Yes.
on. Yeah. All right. So moving on, we have we have quite a <coughs> quite a few number of good things going on as, at the start of this meeting. So uh, the next item we'd like to actually do is is introduce the new principal of Fisher Elementary School to uh, to the the Board of Education and to um, our public and all that kind of stuff. So a couple things I just want to say before we bring her up. Um, the principals of our buildings are really important members of our staff, just like really all of them, but they set the expectations, they drive school improvement, and they certainly establish the culture of our building. Um, they're certainly uh, critical members of our team. And I will tell you, we've conducted a very rigorous search um, for the next principal of Fisher Elementary School. Uh, certainly we've had parents and um, staff members from Fisher Elementary School. We had district leadership members interviewing. Also had the principal from um, Plymouth Center, Ms. Collins, be a part of the interview process. And of course, the full Board of Education had a chance to meet finalists before we, we got here to tonight. Uh, I can tell you that Ms. Loveland has held a vi variety of positions in different school districts around the state. She's been a high school math teacher. She's been a K-12 curriculum coordinator. And she's currently an elementary pr principal at Manchester Public Schools. And uh, I did reach out to her current superintendent during the process. And Mr. Matthew Geary from uh, Manchester said that he finds, he says, I'll say in quote, I have found Ms. Loveland to be an intelligent, thoughtful, articulate, and dedicated school leader who is committed to helping all students be successful. In her time in Manchester, Ms. Loveland has proven to be a very talented, versatile, and reflective educator with a deep understanding of best instructional practice and strong ability to create change that leads to improvement in results." End quote. Uh, and certainly during the interview process, we found Ms. Loveland to have a clear set of skills and dedication to build upon the great work that has been done and has been occurring at Fisher Elementary School in a thoughtful and collaborative manner. And certainly, although we uh, will be missing Ms. Warhunsky, and certainly the shoes that Ms. Warhunsky is leaving to be filled are large. Uh, I'm excited that we could find such a terrific person to fill those shoes. So without further ado, I give you Ms. Kim Loveland, the new principal of Fisher Elementary School. I think she's here. And she's agreed to, you know, just say a few words. And, and I say she's the, new <laughs> well. she's the new principal starting July 1st uh, of 2018. So I'm really, really excited to join this team. Um, you know, I've spent a couple of minutes, really, with Phyllis today. And I got to tour the school. It's really exciting. I can see the commitment of the teachers, of the families, of the community. I'm really invested in the school and seeing it through to the next phases of greatness. So I'm really excited to be a part of that and to lead the team into this next kind of push towards social emotional learning workshop model and just really continuing to continue to make it great. So I'm really excited and I look forward to working with all of you and all of you um, in the upcoming years. That's great. And I know that Ms. Warhunsky is, is excited to continue to, to kind of give you the history mm -hmm. of, you know, where Fisher Elementary School has been and where it's moving. And uh, she spent a lot of a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears. Is she over there somewhere? I can't see her. I know she's uh, put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this school, so she's, she's very vested in uh, working with you as we finish off this school year and put you on the best foot possible. But I don't know if there's questions that any board members have. I don't know if we want to put her more on the spot, but... We asked her a lot of questions the other day. We did. <laughs> we, did. We, did. we did go through quite a process to take the... Uh, a, large pool of, of candidates through the process and, and put them through their paces. And, uh, and Kim did a fabulous job, and we're really looking forward to, to working with her. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, well, in a, in a minute. So the next thing is the, that we're talking about here tonight is our paraeducator of the year. And we started this process a couple of years ago, Ms. Trinks, Director of Special Education, myself, and Ms. Danis, who's the, um, the president of the, the uh, paraeducator wow. union. We talked about really trying to make sure we celebrate the hard work of our paraeducators, because sometimes they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're in the trenches for sure doing a lot of hard work. Um, so the past three years now, we've been able to celebrate a paraeducator of the year, someone who really stands out. 
And um, I don't want to steal Mr. Holt's thunder because the paraeducator of the year this year is from the high school. So uh, I would like to ask Mr. Holtz to come up to the podium and introduce um, the para of the year. And I would also ask our leadership team from the Board of Education to come up to the front as well. Uh, first, I'd like to say thanks for hiring another former uh, high school math teacher. We're starting to take over the district, so congratulations. It's starting to become a uh, criteria here. So. Um, as a representative of the entire THS team, we are really excited about this year's Plymouth Parrot Educator of the Year recipient. Um, if you were able to talk to any of our staff, you'll hear a couple of things. Uh, you'll hear that she follows behavior plans exactly. She documents students' progress so others can easily access the data. She's skilled at de-escalating problems. But that's just kind of part of doing the job. What we really love about this candidate, and what I hope her family hears and, and understands and is so proud of, is that her students trust her. She offers positive words of encouragement, is always willing to help, provides dignity to our students, is flexible, and can work with all students. She cares deeply for her students, understands and is humbled by the impact she has on her students' lives, is one of the hardest and most dedicated people on the team, and my favorite, and you will continually hear this all the time, is that she is a saint. Affectionately known at Terryville High School by the single name of Yola, I present to you Yola Seeds. Take the next part, uh, going into recess. Yeah. Well, I can't put you into recess. I know. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go into recess. We're going to have cake that we love to have. So Tim, if you for you, and also for Yola. Um, so can I have a motion to go into recess for like ten minutes? Don't move. There. Second. Melissa, well, all in favor? Any uh, opposed? Right. Any abstentions? Okay, we are in recess right now. All in favor? Aye. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I need a second. Thank second. You. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. So, resuming, it is the superintendent's update. All right. So, uh, just a, a few items, but one of them a little bit. One is a little bit longer. First, I do want to uh, welcome two of our new board members, and you may do the same at, at the end. But I just wanted to make sure, especially for our audiences watching at home, we have. Uh, Miss Candria Florenciani, yeah. am I pronouncing that? I, I haven't said your full last name completely like that <laughs> with you around, so I wanted to make sure I was correct. But Miss Candria Florenciani and Mr. Gregory Showers is here tonight joining the board, and it's for me it's great because now we have a full nine board member, just as it should be. So welcome aboard, and I know you guys have been reading and learning and. Uh, and uh, have a chance to make some comments at, at the end, if you so choose. But welcome. Uh, I do also want to talk about the 18-19 uh, budget, to kind of give an update to the board, but also to our um, viewers. On March 15th, we presented our the Board of Ed adopted budget to the Board of Finance, and we requested a budget of $24,235,436, which was about a $22,000 increase about a 0.09% increase over this current budget. Um, and keep in mind that included about $320,000 of increases in insurance costs that we're getting back as a quote. I, I did learn at the April 2nd Board of Finance meeting, and I think I've seen some things posted other places as well, that the Board of Finance uh, had, had made a vote to reduce our request by about, a, or your request at this point, by 197000 a little bit more than 197000 so that, that actually would be a reduction from this year's spending of about 0.7%. So instead of looking at an increase of 0.09, they're looking to reduce by about 
Um, as you guys know, we're reviewing insurance carriers, and we may be able to find some savings in our budget. We've been talking about that. We're still at the point where we can't make that um, final yet. There's still a lot of moving parts, and we want to make sure if we're going to do this, we do it right. Mr. Melnick is taking a, a lead role in working with um, – he'll be working with our, our union presidents and working with our legal counsel to make sure whatever decision we make that it's it's – it's a good one for all involved, including the board. But putting that aside for a moment, the, uh, I will say the Board of Finance is in a difficult situation, and not just our Board of Finance, but around the state of Connecticut, given the way the state budget has been and the way ECS has been. So I certainly don't envy their position, just like I don't always envy your guys' position. But um, I will say that they have made an assumption and this could be difficult if you don't pay attention a lot to this information. They're putting an assumption in their budget in terms of the ECS grant of $8.5 million, approximately. I'm just using approximate, approximate numbers. They're using the number for ECS that the governor is proposing that if, it was, if he had it his way, that we would get an ECS funding. So they're using the most conservative number, I think, possible in, their, in the development of their overall town budget. The state budget, when they adopted the two-year budget, has $9.7 million in the budget for us. So there's, that, there's a big swing between what the state adopted in their two-year budget, what the governor is suggesting, and we certainly know what happened this year. When they made all the cuts, they put us in a difficult situation, and we've been working with the town to, to work around that. Um, if they leave the $8.5 million assumption <coughs> in the budget and then a, eventually a budget gets passed, I think it's going to be very important to pay attention to what the final number for ECS money is that comes to the town. So if they use $8.5 million in their assumption and somehow the town actually gets more like $9 million or $9.2 million, we're going to have to ask well, where is that money going? It probably technically could go to the, the general fund, but it would be um, coming out of what was money that was you know, really earmarked for education. So it'll be interesting as we go through this year to pay attention to that assumption. And I'm not saying their assumption is necessarily wrong. They're being as conservative as they feel they need to be, and they do have to make sure the, the budget balances at the end of the year. So. Um, I think that's just important to note. I will say, though, that just because they're making that recommendation at this point, we do know that there's a Board of Finance public hearing on the budget on April 19th, Thursday, April 19th, 7 o'clock. <coughs> and that's an opportunity for the public to be heard on all facets of the budget, not just the education budget, but people can go and talk about Parks and Rec or Department of Public Works or um, you name it, they could be talking about it. Of course, we're concerned right here with the with the education budget. I will be putting out a monthly update to all parents and I'll make sure they're aware of that particular date and that they're aware of where we stand right now with the Board of Education budget. Um, but at the same time, I will say that Mr. Kilduff has done a lot of communication with me. He's come out to all of your meetings. He's paid attention to all your workshops. So he's been very communicative about and very knowledgeable in terms of where we stand. So I appreciate the fact that that's been the case. So I just wanted to give you that update, and I could certainly answer some questions afterwards if I can answer them, or maybe Mr. Melnick, or if we can't answer them tonight, you know, get you more information. My next update is I received a letter from the Parks and Rec Commission, um, and it says, Dear Dr. Semmel, on behalf of the Plymouth Parks and Recreation Commission, we'd like to express our sincere gratitude to the Plymouth Board of Education for opening their doors to the Plymouth Parks and Rec Department for 2017-18 winter activities that included adult volleyball, open gym, youth rec basketball and cheer, youth rec travel, youth rec travel basketball. <laughs> they give a special thanks to Mr. Jim Mazon and the custodial staff, uh, Ms. Gudachowskis in the central office, the teachers and administrators at every school in the district for their efforts, uh, including Parks and Recreation for being an integral member of the Team Plymouth. Um, so just thanking the Plymouth Board of Education for opening, and it was signed Mr. Michael Ganim, uh, but I did notice that we also have Mr. Jerry Bourbonier as the chair of the Plymouth Parks and Recreation, and so 
uh, we, we thank you. So just wanted to make sure I read into the record the things from, the, from them. Um, I was also excited to see, and I don't know where it, it really stands, but I've spoken to the mayor and I've been reading the newspapers. And, um, you know, I've been told to make sure the SRO office is, is available on the first day we get back from vacation. So we're making sure that the, the office is, is getting cleaned out and making sure that a resource officer can be there. So that's where we stand. Um, I don't know what's going to happen on April 23rd. It's not really in the hands of the Board of Education to make that decision, but that's information I'm passing on to you. The mayor's certainly been very supportive of bringing the SRO back now to, um, to the school system. I do want to turn it over to Ms. Parsons quickly to talk about uh, our, our testing sure. window that we're going into. Yeah, I wanted to provide an update on the state assessment window. Um, as you may or may not know, the 11th grade school day SAT is our summative assessment here at the high school, and that was moved due to our last snow, of, well, second to last snow event um, on March 21st, and so our juniors will be taking the SAT on April 24th after vacation. It'll give them a little extra time to study. And um, the NGSS, the science field test, is happening this week right here at the high school for 11th grade. And then the, after the high school wraps up, um, our Smarter Balanced Assessment is the summative assessment for students in grades three through eight. And that will start this Monday and go all the way through to May 18th. So what we do is we stagger it. No longer do we have to shut down the school on testing days and say we're all giving this one test to all of our kids at the same time. Kids can sort of take it at, um, stagger it so the technology um, and, you know, has less chance of, of having conflicts across different schools and, and kids. And so we also stagger it so that it, there's not an impact on the day. You can walk into a school now and, and not feel like it's a, a state testing day. It's just sort of business as usual, which is nice. Um, and then the NGSS field test, which replaces the CMT science for fifth and eighth graders will happen in mid-May. Last year, the state was great. They got us out the scores at the end of June for our um, summative assessments. And that's really nice to have for teachers going into the summer and for principals so that they can start to look at and reflect on the practice based on those scores. So we have the, although it's an, an event, the assessment, we've been working really hard on this all year long and it shouldn't be anything that our kids are not ready to, to handle. Good. Great, thank you. And the last item I want to mention, and a lot of parents ask, but it's on our, I think it's on our website too, and I put it in a lot of my, my updates, and I think principals have done the same. Um, but barring any further unforeseen circumstances, and one of our board members was trying to share a forecast with me earlier, but um, barring any other unforeseen events, uh, last day of school is Wednesday, June 20th. Let's hope. And that would mean graduation would be also on Wednesday, June 20th. So um, I think we should cross our fingers and our toes that we're done with the snow and nothing else occurs. <coughs> and that's the end of my update. I don't know if there's any questions about any parts of this. I just got one question. Yeah. That town meeting, is that uh, for the finance board? We have to all be there, correct? We, it's, it's not that, that you it, have it, to be. Not, is that the adoption that night or nope. is it just a Q&A? It's a Q&A. I would love for all the board members to be there as, as I know you guys support the budget process and what you've built to be there and to advocate for the budget. There's the final date is, I don't think it's been identified yet, but it's usually early May. And that's where there's actually a, 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 a try meeting where you actually need a quorum of the board to, to be there. Good question though. Yep. Yep. Any other? Sorry. It's all right. Anything else? All right. Moving on. Okay, student reps. It's Amy. Um, this Friday, April 6th, Terryville High School is holding our annual strip spring extravaganza here in the auditorium at 6.30. And the tickets can be bought online. And the link is in some of the emails that Mr. Holtz has sent out to us. And um, the tickets are $5 for students, $8 for adults, and senior citizens are, for, are free. And this event is something that everyone always looks forward to. There's the big talent show, and then now we have THS's Most Kangarooiest, where um, the seniors are all competing to end up to see who wins. And this event 
supports the drama club as well as the PTSA aftergrad. So the drama club and all the seniors would really appreciate if everyone would come out and support. Um, the drama club actually just had their play, Nevermore, and it was a huge success. Over, uh, over 500 people in total went to the play, which was really awesome. And it was one of the best plays that the drama club has put out, which was kind of the feedback that they were getting from everyone. Um, our blood drive, which was originally in March, is now April 13th, which was also caused by a snow day. <laughs> So we're excited for that, especially since we are a big anchor school for Red Cross. They kind of rely on us to um, kind of rely on us for our donations. And um, the National Honor Society is holding an animal drive from now until the end of April for our April service project. Um, Drop-off bins are in any of the schools and local businesses in our town. And uh, we're looking for like blankets, beds, toys, um, treats, food, anything that you could use to support an animal. And we'd really appreciate that. And our band and chorus is holding their spring concert on May 7th. And um, this is a big event because this is the last time the seniors will be performing. So it's kind of a bittersweet moment. So they would appreciate um, if people could come out and support them with that. When was the stuff due for the animal drive? Uh, it's now until the end of April. Thank you. Are any of you guys participating in the most kangarooiest? <laughs> <laughs> no. I am in the talent show, though. You're I in the talent I'm not show? Though, so I can't do the other thing. You can't do the most kangarooiest. Yeah. Not yet. All right. You think Mr. Hulk, does he get to perform in the most, most kangarooiest? Well, he should. Like, no. He, he should. Looks, <laughs> he looks like he's nodding his head. I, I you got to be a senior? Yes. <laughs> I think we can make an exception. <laughs> I did a watermelon eating contest once. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough. You're going to have to get him more involved. <laughs> Any questions for Amy? Okay, Ms. Bray. All right. Um, if you're interested on in keeping up with the sports schedule, you can sign up on the CIA website, and this will give you updates to know when games are canceled or rescheduled, which mm -hmm. is very helpful due to the weather we're having. Our softball team captains for this year is our senior Amy Aronimo. Martina Travado, Travado, Macy Festa, and Dominique Picard. Our softball team also has an app. It's called Game Changer, and this app allows them to like watch it live instead of being at the games and dealing with the weather. <laughs> Our baseball team captains are seniors um, Riley Zapone, Dominic Zapone, Mike Tisha, and Zach Hamsey. Um, throughout their practices, they are getting excited due to the talent and expect to have a great season. And they also are waiting for new uniforms, so that's good. Our track team was supposed to have a meet today, but due to the weather, it got rained out. And overall, they expect to have a great season due to the talent, too. Um, there is an out-of-state and out-of-country trip taking place next week. Our band and chorus are heading to Virginia Beach to perform at the Bush Gardens. Also, a group of students are going to Spain and France, and they're excited, and we like to hear more about it when they come back and get pictures and everything. And I forgot about one. Um, our golf team <laughs> had their first practice today, and they also are getting new uniforms, and overall, they expect to have a great season. They can actually so. get out there with this weather. Yeah. <laughs> We're just having trouble with the weather right now. You just can't find the golf ball in I the know. snow. I know. <laughs> Although I think, this, I think the courses are... Or wet. But I mean, the no. track was supposed to be yesterday, <laughs> then today. Yeah. Is it tomorrow? Is track tomorrow I think, now? I think that's what they got warm too, but we'll see. Oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Bree? All right, we stay. Okay, so the Lions and Leos just held their Easter egg hunt on March 24th here at the high school. And there was awesome attendance. We had all ages from like 0 to 10, pretty much. And we also had all of our volunteers. And sadly, we couldn't have it over back in the apple field like we originally wanted because it was gross. Like, it, it was. <laughs> so we ended up doing it on the asphalt, but it still worked out really well. And I think the kids really had, liked it. And so it was altogether a successful event. Coming up on April 14th, the Leo Club is hosting again their annual walk for diabetes. And it's going to be at the middle school. And so everyone meets at the middle school and then walks around town just to kind of raise awareness and all the funds that are raised 
go towards type 1 juvenile diabetes research. And it'll actually be on the same day as the start of the kindness campaign in the town. And so hopefully we can kind of work together with them through that. And so it'll be really cool. And we are inviting everyone to come and walk. It's open to anyone. You could, I think it's 15 to walk. Don't quote me on that. But <laughs> I, Mr. Hills doesn't look like he knows either. <laughs> but you, you can get more info later. So on this past March 23rd, our Future Business Leaders of America attended a conference and competition at Nogtuck Valley. And we all competed in a whole number of different events, from like public speaking to sports management. And we were actually competing against 500 other kids from 35 different schools. And we got five awards, so that was really cool. We, let's see, and this is actually the first time we went, so like that's even more of a boost because we didn't really know what we were getting into. We ended up winning five things. So Jacob Collette got second place in web design. Abby Moyles, Olivia Lopes, and Christina Cotulio got second place in social media campaign. Stephanie Poulin got fourth in healthcare administration. Lindsay Hotchkiss got fifth in healthcare administration. And Bella Christiana, Nicole Tessman, and Jordan Pilvin got fourth in entrepreneurship. And we are super proud of them and looking to next year already. And finally, the school has recently been doing a lot with the junior class and starting to prepare them for college searches. On this past March 28th, a majority of the junior class attended a college fair at the Hartford Convention Center, and they were able to talk to reps from all over the country, and we even had, they even had people from like New Zealand and Ireland and stuff. So we were able to ask questions, get more info. You should see I have a stack. It's like this big of all different college things sitting next to my bed. And yesterday, actually, we had admissions officers <laughs> from UConn, Sacred Heart, and Tungsis talking about the college search process and also answering questions. And so that was good, too, to give us a lot more info. And finally, coming up on April 26th at night, we are hosting a junior college night for parents and students to show them where they should be in the process and how they can see it in all aspects along the way. Thank you. Yeah, Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Nice. Wow. Kids are going to Virginia Beach, France, Spain, <coughs> Greece. Not going nowhere. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to do our first public comment. So um, just make sure you put your name, address on the sheet that's on the top. You have three minutes. All right, going once, Chris, going twice. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. All right, unfinished business. Um, who's taking it? Who wants to take it? I'll, I'll let Marty. Sure, I can, I can start with this. We, uh, at the last meeting, we had the chance to read the 6,000 series for the first time. Um, had a few questions, and we, we got all the answers back out to everybody, so... Uh, Today's the second meeting, so it's the second read of the 6,000 series, so I think it would be appropriate to, to make a motion to adopt them and then see if there's additional questions. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the policy six series 6,000 instruction. Technically, it doesn't need a second coming from committee. So, going right into questions or comments or concerns? Anything more? I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. So you can send it on off. Yeah, we will send that off to CAVE just to get a final. What we do is we send it back to them. We get a, some documents back in PDF form. We'll put them up online so they'll be, now that they're approved. I do want to give the, uh, there'll be another opportunity for subcommittee discussion, but 6,000 series was a, a lot of work, just like the 5,000 was. <laughs> It was a lot of reading, um, <coughs> so I want to thank the committee for working hard on that, and also Ms. Parsons for taking the lead from the administrative team to make sure that the subcommittee was well-versed and ready to take on those. So kudos to all of you for getting that 6,000 done. We'll talk more about the 7,000s later on in the meeting. Okay. All right, one more. <laughs> right. That's it, one more. One more, yeah. Okay, um, on to the consent agenda. I have a motion. 
I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. New business. So under new business we have, we're bringing to you guys, we want to talk, you've heard about the NGSS or the Next Generation Science Standards, but we wanted to give you a quick presentation. So Ms. Parsons is going to give you about a 10 minute presentation on, on Next Gen Science Standards for the board and for our, our viewing and public that's here tonight. So Ms. Parsons. Queuing up the technology. Oh, perfect. I didn't know there was a cover page. I apologize. Oh. Um, so <coughs> I'm going to talk to you about the Next Generation Science Standards. Back in November of 2015, the state of Connecticut adopted these standards as our state standards for science instruction. What we have done since then is we've reviewed the standards, we've done professional development around what the standards are, but one of the things that was really nice is that CREC, which is one of our local RESCs, it's the Regional Education Service Center out of Hartford, it stands for Capital Region Education Council, has pulled together teachers from across the state and wrote units of study that go with the standards. So that was a really great way for us to save time, energy, and money here in Plymouth. And we've uh, purchased those units for a very minimal, minimal cost. Um, and we're using those as the jumping off point for our work. So we have had the professional development where we've looked at the standards and unpacked those units. And so this year in 1718, we have grades K through three, so kindergarten through third grade, are piloting those units as well as grades six and grade nine. So the rollout plan is that next year grades four, seven, and 10 will implement and um, five, eight, and 11. There's a good chance that the units for grades 5, 8, and 11 will be ready for next year, so we'll probably see our teachers piloting in those grades as well. What the state did was that they helped us this year by taking away our, uh, the assessment, the CMT and CAT science, that was aligned to the old science standards from um, the, probably the late 90s. Um, but what happened now is that for the federal government, we have to have an accountability piece for science. So we implemented the NGSS field test you heard me talk about a little bit early. So that's why um, we may be moving forward, or uh, the materials will be available for us to move forward a little bit earlier. So we'll get people um, going. And the teachers are very excited to get started. So our fifth, eighth, and 11th grade teachers are sort of like, give it to us, give it to us, we're ready. So um, we'll also be looking at the additional science electives at the high school as we move forward and <coughs> see where students are coming up. So the standards are what we call three-dimensional. There's three aspects to them. There's disciplinary core ideas, and those are your traditional like, content area standards. There's cross-cutting concepts, which are big picture things that go across any science content, like patterns, cause and effect, structure, and systems. And then there's science and engineering practices. So science and engineering practices, or we affectionately call them SEPs, are at the heart of everything. So no matter what, our K-12 students will be doing these same things whenever they're in science instruction. They'll be asking questions, analyzing and interpreting data, constructing explanations, and engaging in argument from evidence. So those are the practices. And so you take those practices, you layer on the content, and then you look for those themes that go through. So that's what we talk about when we talk about three-dimensional standards. So the layout of the standards and the units is that in grades K through 8, there are units covering all of those DCIs or those domains. There's units that touch upon life science, earth science, physical science, and there's engineering woven in. Sometimes there'll even be units where life science and earth science come together, or physical science and life science <coughs> come together. In grade 9, this is a little bit of a, a change from sort of traditional past practice across the state. What grade nine looks like is that it's earth science and physical science tied together. And the physical science really has to do with more of the force and motion aspect of physical science. And then grade 10 looks more like a traditional biology with the life sciences, but we're layering in that engineering piece. 
And then also um, grade 11 chemistry. So that's where we wrap up with the rest of the physical sciences around chemical reactions and energy transfer with tying in that engineering. So another new piece of NGSS is looking at, the, we've all had exposure to the scientific method. You ask a question, you generate a hypothesis, you test it, and then you write a conclusion at the end saying what worked and what didn't. So what we're looking at is, yes, we still have the scientific method when we ask a question, but a lot of what we do in life and in the applied sciences and in careers is around engineering. So what the difference with engineering is that instead of asking a question, you identify a problem or a need. So you see something that could have improvement, something that needs to be changed or improved. And then you do research, you plan it out, you make a prototype, and you keep coming back and refining that prototype until you've come up with your final product. But there are still similarities in terms of the process. So you start big, you try, 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 you gather data, and then you communicate out what works. So the instruction here is based in phenomena. So I have a couple examples I'll show you. But what that means is that we're engaging students by pulling in something they see in everyday life. Lyme disease, cancer, um, lunar eclipses, um, let's see, racing cars down a track, NASCAR races. So we, we pull in something that is real life, something that they've probably seen and said, hmm, I wonder how that works or what's happening there. And then we rope them in and we have them generate questions and then they create models. So they look at, um, I went to one training where we were talking about currents. So we had to figure out how, to di how a Dyson fan worked without a blade. So there's no, there's no spinning parts in this fan, but yet it's, it's moving air. So you have to create a model, and then as you do these little experiments along the way, you're gathering evidence, creating an evidence log, and coming back and improving your thinking and changing your thinking as you go on. So some of the things that you might see if you walked into a classroom um, in the district right now is that students are engaged in what we're calling CER. They're making a claim, they're finding evidence, and they're proving their reasoning. And the lessons are modeled around a 5E framework. So instead of, um, if you see the five E's across, in traditional instruction, there'd be a lot of explaining going on. And you can see explain is sort of in the middle of the sequence, although it's not always linear. In the middle of the sequence, you see explain, because first you have to engage the students, and you let them explore, and then you can start to explain and label some of what they're seeing. So here are a few pictures of the elementary school. And in this picture, you see these are our second graders. And they're exploring the strength of different materials, pipe cleaners versus wax paper versus cellophane. And you can see there's no textbooks or models for them. They're really doing the exploration. You can also see here that this is first grade work. They're in a unit that revolves around um, shadows and light and if you could read the words up there you would see the first graders are using words like opaque and translucent and transparent they're really looking at how light um, works you can see up in the left hand corner there's a flashlight with a shadow puppet and they're showing you that the shadow would be solid because the object is solid and then down at the bottom they were talking about how shadows move based on where the Sun is so this although it may look simple, is an explanation of a, of a five and six year old really showing you that they can predict where a shadow will fall based on the sun's positioning and they're using words to explain that. This is what we call modeling, which is one of the practices. And again, you can see same first grade class, you can see that they're starting to represent phases of the moon based on observation. At the middle school, I have a video to show you. Um, from one of the sixth grade. It's mostly sixth grade what you'll see here, but there's a little of seventh and eighth grade as well.
that you may have noticed in question <coughs> was the poster with the sticky notes all around the outside. So what that is, is we call it a diamond board, or in that case it was a circular shape. But each group has a corner, and they record their thinking so that in the middle they can then come to conclusions. And then we also have an example from the high school of one of our ninth grade teachers, Ms. Archambault. Well, with the NGSS curriculum, we take a phenomenon and we start out with that and it's all phenomenon-based learning. So students are uh, introduced to a phenomenon that it can explain um, a global event or can range from a variety of different things. Well, then perhaps they were connected together at one time and then when they split apart, Today we watched a phenomenon on how South America and Africa kind of combine to make one bigger supercontinent. It's like in Pangea time to, to today, so the plate tectonics and they move and whatnot. And what we wrote, there was like land bridge, and then that's how like maybe they were connected before. I'm not too sure, because just ideas, hypothesis, and ours. Right now, they're modeling the data that they think that can explain the phenomenon. That's one of the key components of the NGSS curriculum is modeling, and it's all phenomenon-based. Nice job with that. Keep moving? Yeah. All right. Moving. So leaving um, the next generation science standards, I do want to talk about something that's not always pleasant for the board to talk about, but the next piece here is about non-tenured teachers. And so I gave you some information earlier, but um, as you know, the state has a statute that by May 1st, you do need to, to identify non-tenured teachers that you're going to non-renew for any particular reason. Uh, and by, if you do it by before May 1st, it's pretty much the board just gets to make the decision and there's nothing else that can really be done at that point. And we do know from our budget process, the development process, that we went from a 1.0 French teacher to a 0.6 French teacher. So the recommendation that I bring to you tonight is that we really need to eliminate um, the 1.0 position so I can therefore go ahead and internally post the 0.6 position. Um, so I would ask that you guys consider the, uh, the motion as stated, but someone would have to if, you know, read through that in order to do that. Um, a motion to approve the non-renewal of contract of employment of S Samia Asadi. Did I say that? Correctly? Yep, you did. Okay. French teacher at Cherrywell High School, and that said contract not be renewed for the following year upon its expiration at the end of the 2017-2018 school year due to budgetary constraints. The superintendent of schools is hereby directed to advise such person in writing of this action. Second. Second. Any discussions? Well, I'll voice my concerns as I voiced it the last time. Um, the biggest problem with this is that when, and I'll just use as an example my son who went to a technical school who didn't have any foreign languages, when those kids get to college, if you don't have a foreign language, you're basically told that you have to take two years of a foreign language at that college. And unfortunately, when, like in the case of my son who had Spanish in the eighth grade but had nothing until he got to Central, 
which was four years, he had a really hard time. He flunked Spanish and he flunked French. You know, it's kind of disheartening for a kid who's trying to get a <coughs> college degree when they have no way of having a language support, especially in a technical school. So really what you're going to do with this is you're going to take away some language, you know, and it's French, and I understand, you know, it has to do with class sizes and stuff, but, you know, that student that may do okay in that first maybe couple of years of French, but then gets to the college level and can't get past it, it's really disheartening to that individual. So it's the only comment that I want to make, so. Is this the only French class? We have one French teacher here, and unfortunately, um, students just are not signing up for French the way they used to. So there's really only a need for those three sections, which is, which is why it, it just makes good financial sense, which is why in the budget process that was approved through the budget process to reduce that. So it's just the one French teacher. We have quite a few Spanish teachers here. Ms. Parsons, do you want to add something? So we will still be able to offer next year French 1 through 3. <coughs> yep. We will also be able to offer French 1 through 4, um, Spanish 1 through 4. Yep. Um, and there's always an online opportunity that we have for additional language courses. But what the state is requiring at this point is no foreign language. The proposed regulations moving forward would be one credit of foreign language or world language. And most colleges are looking for two to three. So we're still well within um, those parameters by being able to offer um, Spanish <coughs> one through four and French one through three. Right, and the eighth grade program we've made it so it's a it's it's a full year of Spanish in eighth grade now. So the kids who are taking Spanish in eighth grade are are getting well prepared. I was talking to Mr. Negron just last week where I was checking out the Spanish classes. The kids feel well prepared to take Spanish too when they come up to the high school as freshmen. So um, yeah, it's unfortunate that French has not been um, selected as often by students, but we are offering to them what they are asking for. They're still getting what they want, and there still is opportunities for French, so. Any other questions or comments? Um, are you gonna find another place for her in the district? So what we're gonna do is we're <coughs> going to, this is eliminating the position, and then I'm gonna turn around and internally post, mm -hmm. internally post the point six. So I'll encourage her to apply for that particular position. Okay, and how many years has she been in Plymouth? Her second. I was going to say this is just her second. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah. Tenured, so. oh, okay. yeah. <clears throat> and just so everybody knows, she she had been informed about this discussion tonight. Like this is this wouldn't come to a surprise mm -hmm. to her. Mr. Holt has had the conversation with her. And to make it clear, this is a this is a budget situation because mm -hmm. you can also non renew people at this time of the year for performance reasons. This has nothing to do with performance. This is purely budgetary um, decision making. Any other questions or comments? Nope. Um, okay, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Jerry, any nope. abstentions? Okay, has passed. Thank you. All right, so I will make sure she is written and she, she gets that written notification like you had in the motion. The next piece is the healthy food certification comes up every year. And uh, so I asked Mr. Melnick to just walk you through the process in terms of the healthy food certification and uh, through the motions that we're required to go through each year for the state. So, Mr. Melnick. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm going to um, pass around a document that will help us a little bit as we have the discussion. So tonight we're going to ask you to make two motions. Um, they're laid out here. I was told this morning uh, in discussion with our food service director, Ali, that I need to read them. I didn't have time to verify that, so I am going to read them at some point uh, to you in a moment. But what you are looking at is something that 90% of the state of Connecticut school districts participate in. We get um, 10 cents per meal for every meal that is um, served, and that's free and reduced and, and um, regular meals. Last year, uh, that benefited the town and the food service program in the amount of $12,042. So for every meal that was offered, if you will, and served, get free or reduced or, or paid for, we got 10 cents. This program started in 2005, 2006 uh, with the idea that um, 
you would buy off of state approved guidelines and those would be healthier foods for students. It took a while to get going because there was some resistance at first that the, the students wouldn't buy those items. But, uh, and it proved to be true initially, but it's, it's really, it's gotten much better. So this evening, um, we're gonna ask you to, to make, you know, vote on two uh, issues. What the restrictions are, or you, you can't serve uh, a half hour before or after breakfast or lunch. They don't want you competing with your own program, right? Um, you need an exception list for events, and I'm not gonna define it here because it's defined in the language of the motion, but um, they have to be school-sponsored events, not practices, but like a, a soccer game or a, a show or something like that. So um, with that, I'm gonna dive into the motion. And bear with me while I read this. Uh, the first one, pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 10-215F, the Board of Education or Governing Authority certifies that all food items offered for sale to the students in the school under its jurisdiction are not exempted from the State of Connecticut Nutrition Standards published by the Connecticut Department, uh, State Department of Education will comply with the Connecticut Nutrition Standards during the period of July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. This certification shall include all food offered for sale to students separately from reimbursable meals at all times and from all sources including, but not limited to, school stores, vending machines, school cafeterias, and any fundraising activities on school premises sponsored by the school or by non-school organizations or groups. So that's the first um, item in question that we're asking you to make a motion on. I'd like to make a motion to implement the healthy food option. Second. Second. Um, any discussion, comments, or concerns? Can I ask yeah. a question? Sure. sure. This is only for a half hour before or after the end. So what's the meal times that you have at the schools? That would not allow you to sell for fundraising, school stores? All the schools vary. I mean, I, I don't have the meal times um, memorized, but obviously the high school, um, because of the earlier start period, has an earlier um, meal time than the elementary schools. So um, <coughs> whatever the school day is, I, I don't have the calendars off the top of my head. So if the latest was two, the school gets out at 2.30, by 2.45, 3 o'clock, you can sell for school events and stuff? Right, if there was a, a basketball game that started at 3 o'clock, the, uh, the lunch period's over, it's been a half an hour, and you wanted to have a fundraiser or a service there, so who so you could. So 30 minutes out. Right. And just so you know, we've been operating under these guidelines for the past few years, so we're, we, the PTAs and all those folks are well within the, within the guidelines. No, I know just because the middle school does a lot of that yep. basketball games and stuff, so yep. I just want to make sure that I knew that that is. Yep. It's all in the up and up what they're doing at the, at the middle school. Yep. Any other questions or concerns? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. So does, I'm going to assume these standards say that we can only sell certain foods, right? You do. Okay. And uh, are the, I'm just going to assume based on the name that these foods are healthier than other foods that the school would be selling. Right. An easy example would be if you went into the cafeteria, you would see baked chips, not the, the Fritos or, or other brands. So that does that cost more or less to the students who actually buy them? No, the same price. It's I mean, the same yeah, price. Yeah, right. Um, and you that's said... That's all that's offered. So they're, they're not sitting there making a <coughs> comparison of um, the choice. And does it... You, you said we save money. But, uh, all the schools that do it save money, or all the districts that do it save money because of it. They get the reimbursement, 10 cents per meal. So, uh, I guess that's this way. If we were to mm -hmm. change the way we were doing it, mm -hmm. would it cost... I know the students would have more options than what they can eat, but would it also cost less to do that? Or is it too speculative? It'd be speculative. All right, let me ask. Uh, I guess since you've been here longer, maybe you'd be able to answer. I'll do my best. Yeah, because it's sort of, I guess, a long, longer ago question. Whenever this first came about, did we spend more or less money in... Food. Well, I would assume less because the students bought less from what he just said. But if you can sort of see where I'm going with my question. The resistance was initially that um, you would want to buy, I'm going to pick on the potato chips again. Oh. The students would want to buy a specific 
salty potato chip that was more tasty than a baked chip. It wasn't that the cost of the, the, the individual package was different, that was sales were going to go down. Um, you know, we would buy less uh, product, basically. So I, it, it really wasn't yeah. made for financial. I mean, the state's encouraging a healthy um, program. I absolutely understand that, and that makes a ton of sense. But does it actually save the district's money to be in this program? I, don't, I mean, I think the answer is yes. I, off the top of my head, I wouldn't be able to start quoting numbers about what we spent 10 years ago. I can tell you that since we've gone to bringing the food process in-house and not using an outside vendor, we went from having to cut a check from the Board of Education each year from a tune of 50 to 65 to 70,000 to now actually being self um, Self-managed or self what's self right? self-sufficient. Self yeah, self-sufficient, self-funded. Self yeah. We're actually at a point where we're able to replace equipment um, with the with the money that we've gotten. So it's working out because kids are buying the food that we're putting out, and they are healthier options. So you know we're giving kids healthy choices, and they're making those healthy choices. So I don't know what would have happened if we didn't. I can't. I wouldn't be able to speculate what the trajectory would have been if we could have served, you know, carnival food all day kind of thing. I think, too, I, I, as someone who sees it firsthand, I have had lunch duty for the last 15 years. It has really come a long way. The food is much better than it used to be, and it's very tasty, actually. And I, I will say in the beginning, it was not great, and the kids noticed it. But almost every kid in school now is has never had anything else mm -hmm. but these options yeah. Yeah. so it's just something that they're used to and it really is much much better when we moved here I two and a half years ago I my kids thought it was gourmet food like they were really impressed with the food that they got here versus their last school so what my kids the, eat it and they what, don't complain what was the last school what a very <laughs> so ladies do you have anything to comment on food, I don't know if you guys even. I, I bring lunch from home every day. Yeah, I, I do too. But a lot of people, yeah. especially at the high school, love the wraps. Yes. Everyone, oh, yeah. everyone no, has no, to no, sprint yeah. down to lunch yeah. to get the wraps. Everyone loves the wraps, and we also miss Miss Tony. Yeah. Everyone loved having Tony, but we're excited to have the new. I don't know her name, but we're excited to have the new lady that's here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Tony's here until Friday. I mean, he's officially yeah. his last day is officially Friday, but. Yeah, he's moving on to a very new, exciting job. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome yeah. for him. Yeah. Anything, anything else you want to ask, Josiah? Yeah, the, when you said we brought it in-house, uh, the, the selling in-house. Right. So in my mind, that's counterintuitive, so explain what I'm, I'm missing here. Because when I was, I was thinking, so we took on the state info, and now we're doing it. No, we the, the, the so. way it was, and, and Mr. Melnick might be able to explain it better, but there's, we used to have a vendor. And it would be the vendor who came in, so basically a third party, who came in and ran our food service for us. And because he was a third party, or the company was a third party, we ended up having to pay that kind of middleman fee. And that middleman fee, when, it, when the board originally went to that vendor, however many years ago, they thought they were actually going to be able to run a very efficient ship, and it was going to actually save money. But in the end, the, it, it didn't work out that way. It, for whatever reason, we were paying more than we were taking in. And so Mr. Penn, myself, and the board, we decided we were going to go back to hiring our own um, food service director, which is Ms. LaBarbara. And you'll actually see her in June, because she's going to talk to you guys all about the food service program in general and where it's at. But when she's come in, last year we were actually almost about break even, mm -hmm. which was ended up being a savings for us because we had budgeted a, lo a bigger loss, and now this year, we've come a long way, and we're actually at the point where we're able to put money back into our program. And it's notable, too, to note that this is an area where we've regionalized, so we share yes. these services mm -hmm. with other towns. That is a very, yes, yes. Miss, she, um, she runs four other districts, and we all pay into one price, so we, we're not paying her her full salary. She's in here two days a week. So we pay 40% of the salary. So I think, if I'm not wrong, you just answered my original <coughs> question when you said you, it used to be that we actually are paying more money to uh, do the food than yep. we take in. And now you're saying we're coming close to breaking even. So that sounds like you answered my original question, which is 
Well, it wasn't a difference in food, though, because no. the food has been the healthy choice yeah. food for right. It's been it's for been the same program. Years. Been yeah. the same program. We yeah. just it, oh well, initially initially combined. initially we used to be in house, and Karen and I were here when mm -hmm. we went to uh, Chartwells. Yeah. Okay, for cost savings, which we were basically so told we were going to have cost savings, and all of a sudden we found out that yes, there were cost savings, but there were things in the contract that we didn't we didn't see the little fine print that was in the bottom that if you didn't do X amount of business, you, then we had to pay the vendor a certain amount of money. So then we decided to go back to in house, and now we're getting we're getting a bigger bang for our buck now than we did were three we four years ago. Part of this program before and so yeah so years. this Many years. Oh, okay. yeah so that's this is this like is a nothing standard. new no, this is nothing this new is a service provider oh, okay yeah. so that's the difference I think that I thought your original question was about that. like if we could have done it all different and we yep, sold yep. whatever we wanted to could we be making more I, I really you, don't you, know you couldn't possibly answer that and I I understand okay. that makes sense all right did you want to say something oh um I was gonna mention that like even the in-house thing even goes beyond just school lunches like this you know last year we had a ring like everyone did you know class rings and we had our ring breakfast and we like went through them mm -hmm. and they were able to like get it cut us to do a deal for and it was really like it was really good and so they do more than just lunch for us yeah and they do breakfast and too so. anything yeah, else good. before we bring it to a full vote anything else all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any no. No. Any abstentions? All right. Josiah said no. All right. Moving on. Okay. All right. The uh, second portion, and this is required as well. Uh, I'll read it. The exemption for food items. The Board of Education or governing authority will allow the <coughs> sale of, to students of food items that do not meet the Connecticut nutrition standards, provided that the following conditions are met. The sale is in connection with an event occurring after the end of the regular school day or on the weekend. The sale is at the location of the event. The food items are not sold from a vending machine or school store. An event is an occurrence that involves more than just regularly scheduled practice, meeting, or extracurricular activity. For example, soccer games, school plays, interscholastic debates are events, but soccer practices, play rehearsals, and debate team meetings are not. The regular school day is a period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of an official school day. Location means where the event is held. I'd like to make a motion to allow the food exemptions. Second. Jerry, any questions, comments, or concerns? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, um, board members and committee reports, um, F and L. Yep. Uh, the Finance Operations Subcommittee met prior to the board meeting and reviewed the accounts by facilities report for the month of, month of March. That same will be forwarded to the Town of Plymouth Board of Finance. And we had no transfers, so that is all our business. <laughs> Any questions? All right, moving on. Student Achievement. Uh, the Student Achievement Subcommittee will meet on April 5th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. in the conference room at the central office. Okay, thank you. Um, policy. The Policy Subcommittee met on April 2nd, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. in the conference room at central office and <coughs> reviewed policy series 7,000 construction. And we completed it. Yay. <laughs> you guys did it in one night? We did. Yeah, it was like, easy. It was, it morning. was short, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I wasn't there. I shouldn't say that. But. We're going to be sending those on to CAVE. We'll get them back. <coughs> and the plan would be to make sure they get to you guys for a first read for May. Nice. Therefore, a second read in June. Perfect timing. Perfect timing, finishing all of your policies. Fabulous. That's at least the plan, as long as you guys get us there. Yep. Okay. Um, no, no, no negotiations. All right. Um, second public comment. Three minutes. Going once. Going twice. Okay. Moving on. Um, board liaisons. Um, Harry S. Fisher. Um, 
where to start. <laughs> the, um, the PTA um, Tuesday, two weeks ago, I think it was. I'm terrible with dates, forgive me. Um, they were scheduled to have spring lectures <coughs> the next day, and we had snow. snow. <laughs> Shocking. So those were rescheduled. Um, uh, the PTA also had their um, book fair, and it was very, very successful. And they have another meeting this coming Tuesday on April 10th. And I believe that they will be looking for nominations for their board members. Thank you. Any questions? All right, moving on. Um, Plymouth Center, who's doing that this time? Um, their meeting this Tuesday coming up, but the last one was canceled due to snow. <laughs> So, <laughs> I haven't had one in a while. Okay, perfect. Um, Eli? Um, who's doing I it? will defer to Cindy since the Republicans <laughs> had a caucus okay. that I had to attend. <laughs> um, so our quarter auction was great. We, we raised about $1,800. Wow. Um, we're also looking for new board members that will be looking for some of the fifth grade parents that are moving out. Um, we are coming up to the end of the year, so we're trying to plan out some of the activities um, for graduation. We want to sell flowers this year while people are waiting in line and possibly do a balloon event where parents in the town can purchase the balloons and we'll deliver them to their mailboxes and tie it the night before so when the kids wake up, they'll have balloons tied to their mailboxes. So we're working on that. Um, we don't want to see you. You want that. Miss Calessa, she's yeah, thinking. Talk to, <coughs> talk to your mom. You can put you. the yard signs. That I know, I like the yard signs. Yeah, the yard signs. I want one alone. I want one alone. That was the way. We can work on it together. I would appreciate that. that. I'll put it on the list. We have. Um, we're planning for Teacher Appreciation Week coming up in May, so we're going to be looking to do something nice for the staff at the school, and that's pretty much it. Okay. I, that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, you saw the reaction. I know. The <laughs> I mean, I do like your yard sign. Like, even if the elementary schools did it for the fifth grade, this way the whole town will have exactly. a balloon for you. Like, a big graduation party. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, THS? Yes, Terryville High School met on March, the Terryville High School <coughs> PTSA met on March 26th. I actually was not able to make that meeting, but my daughter was there, so I have all kinds of notes. And um, the treasurer's report, there we are doing very well. We are nearly at our goal, and we have a couple more fundraisers, so please support the after-grad party. Um, the principal had a report and reminded seniors that their class dues are due and that if you don't know how much you owe please to see a class officer probably Allison or Trey and they will be able to tell you Trey will know Trey will Just know like exactly that. how much you owe <laughs> and Allison will have no problem telling you how much you owe. <laughs> um, AP exam res registration was due today and um, there is a high percentage of students who are taking the exams in AP classes, which is good news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Holtz also talked about reminding students and parents about the impact of social media and, and how it can affect mm -hmm. students' futures, future endeavors, and how parents should be aware of their children's social media, even through high school, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good reminder <coughs> for high school parents because we don't always check in at as we as we did when they were younger um, the spring extravaganza is coming up as the reps talked about and if you could please join us on Friday night we would appreciate that also some other fundraising ideas for the PTSA are the Mother's Day flower sale that we have every year on the Plymouth Green and that will be on May 12th so that would be great if you could support them in that way and we will also be having some yard signs made for our graduates and those will be available for purchase by parents and grandparents and neighbors who want to celebrate our seniors. <clears throat> um, grad night is planned for June 20th, and they were waiting on confirmation from the sports center because every time we had a snow day, they had to call <laughs> and confirm that the date was still available. 
Yeah, so they've had to call a lot to be yeah. sure that today is still available. I've had to make a lot of calls, too. Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> so I, I haven't heard yet whether that was confirmed, but I'm assuming it was because I think that they'd be in a panic if it wasn't. So okay. I'm sure that that's all set. The goal is to send all the seniors for free so that they don't have to pay for that event. So that's the goal. That's what all the fundraising is about, so that all of our seniors can have a safe uh, graduation celebration with their friends and spend the time there and it's a very safe environment and the next meeting for the PTSA is going to be next Wednesday April 11th where they will consider balloons <laughs> we will bring up balloons <laughs> any questions all right moving on um, SEPTA would you like to start I attended the uh, SEPTA meeting on March 15th when you guys were all at the finance. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be a short meeting. We didn't get out until 9.15. But, <laughs> That's but anyway, we, we had a representative from DCF, and she discussed mandated reporting of abuse and neglect and who must report it, uh, sexual abuse, human trafficking, trafficking, et cetera. Uh, then there was neglect, educational neglect, uh, neglect and medical neglect and abandonment. One of the things that struck me was that they seemed to be a bit reticent about taking action when medical attention is being withheld for religious region reasons. And I, I'm, you know, religion has no place in public school, and I, I just don't like that. I think if somebody's withholding uh, 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 medical attention for their child, whether it's chemotherapy or whatever, I think my feeling is the state should step in at that point. That's just my opinion, maybe, but I, that's the, the, I left with that in my mind, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions? I know we have an additional because. Yes, we are hosting on April 26th. Right. Um, Focus uh, Center for Autism will be doing another Autism Unplugged um, <laughs> at 6 o'clock in the auditorium here mm -hmm. at the high school. It is the same night as the junior. Um, thank you. So I think you guys are going to be moved into here because we're taking over. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Gowan asked me. I'm like, no, we got that room. Um, so, so this yeah. Is, this is similar to the one that was held a couple of years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to just explain a couple more sentences about what a participant would see if they were to go. So a panel of. Um, People who have autism and Usually young adults young. from like 13 to like 26. Sorry, go ahead. Do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> um, they they speak about their experiences, things that have worked for them, things that have not worked for them. Um, I believe when we did it two years ago, a mom actually spoke too and, and discussed what her perspective was and and what helped her son and, and the kinds of things that didn't help her son. It's a very informative program. It's, it's one of the most moving things that I think we actually do, that we provide. Um, and it's also, there are um, individuals that do not have a voice. So sometimes they have a letter written and somebody else will read it for them. Um, so they don't have to necessarily have a vocal voice. Um, some of them use iPads, some of them actually sign. So it is one of the most moving things you ever want to experience. Please do, and it's free of charge. It's at 6 o'clock here on the 26th. So everybody's welcome. Any questions for um, Dick or for Melissa? All right, um, Cabe. Cabe, next meeting is April 25th. Did they get snowed out? <laughs> um, I have no idea, but hopefully I don't show up this time and nobody's have the there. the doors locked. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. You know, so. But, but Pat will let me know if it gets canceled. <laughs> not, but I'm we sure. did get, uh, Melissa and I and Dr. Samuel did get to go the day on the hill. Yep. Um, so we wanted to let you know that we did do that. Um, it's pretty informative, but I have to say, um, I am completely 100% proud of our superintendent. He spoke up twice um, when other superintendents did not, and um, I was there going like this the whole time. But I want to say that he really did advocate for all kids, but especially the kids in this district. So, thank you. You're welcome. Well, one thing I did notice from watching TV, because they showed it on TV, mm -hmm. looked like it was... Uh, a very minimal audience. Yes. It looked a lot less than in previous years that well, I've Well, I will gone. say that at the beginning, there was a lot more, but mm -hmm. they had tons of kids, but then you know what was happening? They were being pulled out to go do their visits early. So definitely had a lot more than when once the um, 
the reporters were there. There was like nobody in the audience. So, right. and he, they had just missed Dr. Semmel talking to. Him. I was like, ooh, I wish you were just here like two minutes before because they would have seen him talking. So, but. thank you. Any questions? Any other comments about Gabe or anything? I was just thinking when he said when Jerry said that um, it looked like less people. That was another date that had been moved. Yes, because of snow. Right. Of yeah. Snow. Yeah. yeah. Because of snow. Yeah. Right. <coughs> it was a little. Yeah. It's true. Again, snow. We love the snow this year. All right. Um, anything else before I go on to board comments? All right. Any board comments before I make my final one? Jerry. I just have one, and I really would like to commend the committee that brought us, Shannon. I mean, Kim. Oh, Kim. Kim, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm all right. We're that still getting us, to know you, Kim. Yeah, that's all right. That brought us, Kim. I really, I must commend you. The individuals, I do believe, Phyllis, you were on the first new one. No? Well, whatever committee that brought, that was brought us in. I know Melissa was there. Yeah. Okay? Um, and, all right. In all honesty, I will tell you from me bringing on previous boards, the these committees are really bringing us great candidates. They really are. And it really gets really <coughs> tough when it comes down to when we start interviewing people and then at the time, I think there were six of us in the room that are trying to wrap our heads around on who's good and who's not good. And it's really, really tough to try to figure out which one you want. And then all of a sudden, that conversation that you think is only going to take 10 minutes turns into a 45-minute debate. And it's, in all honesty, it's really, really good because I've been in previous subcommittees where all of a sudden the candidate comes in, this is who you got, and that's what we have to live with. So I must commend the individuals that get on these committees because you've been doing a really, really good job. Thank you. Anything else? Any last comments? Okay, I just have a few. Um, I want to congratulate Yola again. I think that was um, an extraordinary um, person to have as our pair of the year, and I know Mike is completely excited about that. Um, welcome, Kim. We're excited. Um, we hope that everything goes smoothly in your transition, but thank you. Um, Welcome to Greg and to Cindy. Um, welcome, to, welcome aboard. <laughs> At least it was an easy meeting for you guys. Um, and then I just want to personally say this to you. As you can tell, I'm wearing blue. A few of us are wearing blue. It is Autism Awareness Month, so please wear your blue all month. And I were, our next meeting is actually a regular scheduled meeting um, here in the high school, May 9th, 7 o'clock. And I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you.